Okay, we're ready to go. All right. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, I'm Suzanne Nielsen, and um, I'm a rep for Zen and do some pattern designing and things. Um, I'm going to be doing most of the demo today along with Nick, and she is also a rep out in Canada. Um, so the the fun thing is that she is a thrower and I am a picker. <laughs> so we're going to be having both of our cameras showing you each way. So if you are um, if you are a picker like me, if you hold the yarn in your left hand, then you can watch uh, my my hand screen and I have um, bamboo needles and a Nick has the metal needles. So you can she's going to be throwing. Um, so this is knitting in both directions. And like I said, we are going to record this so you can go back and watch it later. Um, and we have another fun surprise at the end. So I'll get to I'll get to that later. But for now, we're just going to dive in and get started with this little demo. So it's not intended for you to be actually knitting. It's just intended to watch. Um, I am going to move a little quickly, but or I'm going to try and go slow. I always move too fast, but I'll try and go slow. <laughs> um, but you can rewatch things. <laughs> so um, just be patient, just just watch. And then maybe later on, you can follow along. Um, but so knitting in both directions, why would you want to do that? Um, some people actually um, knit all the time in both directions. So most people will start with all the stitches on your on your right hand, oh, sorry, start with the stitches on your left hand, and then you'll transfer them over to your right needle. Um, but people who are left-handed sometimes will do this, or sometimes a person would just always want to um, knit the opposite direction on the wrong side rows so that your the right side of your work is always facing you. Um, I don't do that, but I do use it <clears throat> anytime I'm doing a pretty short row. Um, it just saves you from having to like turn your work all the way around and knit the other direction for like a few stitches and then turn and knit back. So I do this when I'm um, doing bobbles. So I brought a little sample of bobbles here. Um, but also like entrelock is really good for knitting in the other direction. And also, um, uh, what else, Nick? What am I missing? Bobbles, like the start of a shawl or something where you just have a few stitches on your needle and you just want to, just don't want to have to turn. Um, very, very short, short rows. Yes. Like actual short, short, short rows. rows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So anytime you just have a short amount of work and you don't want to bother turning, it's a great technique to, to learn. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's one of those kind of fun mind bending uh, exercises. So give it a try. <laughs> but we're going to get what it keeps you sharp keeps you sharp yes <laughs> all right so now um i'm going to spotlight we're going to spotlight maybe and it can help me <laughs> spotlight yep. my hands here um so first of all i'm going to knit this just the normal way so all of my stitches are in my left hand and i'm going to be transferring them to my right hand um and then um i'm gonna just talk about a few things these are just some basic terminology that I'm going to be using. So when your stitches are on your needle, um, you can see that they are mounted a certain way. So the stitches are sitting on your needle so that they're either sitting this way, so that the leg of the, um, your, I call this part here, here, I'm gonna knit one stitch and then talk more, sorry, I'm not gathering my thoughts well, but um, so normally you knit into that front leg so you see how the stitch is mounted on the needles in a certain way. Um, and the, the leading leg is the one that flows into the stitch in front of it. So right now I say that my leading leg is in front. If it were mounted like this, then my leading leg would be towards the back. So that's just how I'll be talking. And that's more important when we start going the other direction. But in this case, in order to not have a twisted stitch, I would knit into the back of that stitch. Um, so that's just the normal knit stitch. So I'm, I'll talk about your leading leg and how now your leading leg here is in the front and that's normal um, And as we knit across. Again, so I am, I am picking, I just hold the yarn in my left hand and I grab it. Now, the thing with 
knitting in the opposite direction is that if you are a picker, you'll become a thrower. And if you are a thrower, you will become a picker. <laughs> so, <laughs> or I could say, you know, English or continental, but um, so I, right now I'm, I'm going to pick my yarn, but now when I switch to go back, I don't have to turn my work at all. Now I'm just gonna build the stitches back onto my left needle um, instead of my right needle. So, <clears throat> Um, first, I think that the easiest is to um, do stockinette, which means that I'm doing the equivalent of purling back. Um, so I'm, I'm going to create stockinette fabric. Um, so let's see, if you imagine if I turn my work, if I were going to turn my work, I would turn it like this and I would be purling back. So when you're purling, your yarn is in the front of your work. But if I'm purling backwards, then my yarn can stay to the back of my work. So now I'm going to purl back um, or purl in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put my needle into the leading leg of the stitch um, from the front to the back. Can you see that well enough? Um, so from the front to the back. Now I have to throw my yarn because I need the yarn to go around this needle and I can't really grab it. So I'm becoming a thrower here. So I'm going to throw my yarn around the needle and bring it through the loop, just like you do in regular knitting. So I'm going, I'm going to try and get a couple different angles here. And then after I do this one row, I think then Nick will join me and, or she's showing you you can do you want to do it at the same time <laughs> sure with the other ones yeah um yeah so now we've got both of us highlighted i think you can see that um and so i'm going into the stitch and throwing my yarn around and coming back out into the stitch throw the yarn and back out so if you're not used to throwing your yarn you do, um, I do kind of stabilize my needle with my right hand. I think I'm freezing a little bit. Oh, so I'm stabilizing, together. can't tell, <laughs> um, and, and throwing the yarn and then pulling it through the stitch. All right, so wrap around, pull it through the stitch. I'm going into that, the, the leading leg, which is in the back of my work and bringing it through. All right. So that is one row. So for the throws, because somebody commented that they couldn't see either of our hands and we were both spotlighted. So I'm just gonna quickly go. Oh, okay. We'll switch, we'll switch back switch to, here. this is for so, throwing. So if, if you're a thrower, for, yeah. you're, So if yeah. you're regularly a thrower and you're holding your right hand, It'll be the same process. So do you want to describe it as we go, Suzanne? Sure. Yep. So she she already has that yarn in her right hand. So now she can just pick it with that left needle. So she's just grabbing the yarn with her left needle um, and then pulling it through the loop. So she has essentially become um, become a picker. Or be, yeah. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes if you're so used to wrapping the yarn, you'll still kind of do that technique even the other way, which is just fine. <laughs> yes. But basically she's going into that leading leg and towards the back of her work, grabbing the yarn and bringing it through. All right, and then, um, we're going to also show you, let's see, is our other, is everybody seeing okay now? It's back okay. on you. I'm getting some, some nods. So, <laughs> okay. Um, if, it, if it's not working, then we are recording it. So we will, we'll have that up in a little bit, but <laughs> I think it's working for most of you. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and just knit back um, so that you can kind of get a feel for that. Um, but now I'm going to um, do garter stitch. So that is 
if we're looking at our knitting here, I would turn it and I would put my yarn to the back and knit a row. So if you can see how this is, this is what I would be doing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to work backwards. So I need my yarn to come to the front now. Um, so bring the yarn to the, to the front. This is essentially what would happen if you knit back, but I'm going to work back. Um, and so now I'm going to come in, I'm still going to go into that leading leg, but I have to come from the back of my work towards the front and then stabilize my needles, throw the yarn around and bring it through. All right, so I'm still working into that leading leg. The leading leg is in the back of my um, right needle and I come from the back to the front, wrap the yarn around and bring it through. Wrap and bring it through. Okay, I'll, I'll finish this row and then we'll show the, um, the English style of working backwards. <laughs> so in, wrap, pull it back out. It, it, it is definitely, I think for most people, it's going to be a little bit slower but it saves you so much time having to turn back and forth that it's worth practicing a little um, just for those times when you need it. <laughs> um, all right, let's spotlight a Nick now and right. um, see it the other way. <laughs> going into the back or from the back. From the back to the front. And then she's still kind of throwing with her um, with her right hand, but basically you you don't switch which hand your yarn is in, even if you're knitting backwards. You leave it in the hand that it feels comfortable tensioning with. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna sorry. I'm trying to read the um, some comments so that we can. Make sure if you if you do have um, you know something, then please feel free to do the comments or raise your hand. I think we'll see it if you raise your hand too. Um, yes, you can go in both directions. You know, some people, like I said, they they um, they'll knit, they'll always knit back. Doesn't matter if they're doing garter stitch, stock in it. Even you can increase, decrease. You can do anything in the opposite direction. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. fun. And then, yes, um, uh, Carol asks about gauge. It does affect your gauge, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, it's just something you have to practice a little bit. And then, and then I think if you're, you know, pretty experienced knitting, knitting normally, <laughs> um, then you can kind of see how it's affecting your gauge as you're going. Um, but yes, yes, you can do your edge stitches. You can do anything. Um, probably the easiest, you know, edge stitch is when you're just slipping it. Um, but, but, you know, you can do anything. I How... actually have a garter edge on my little. Oh, there you go. Nice. Your... <laughs> so you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can do anything. Um, even like working two stitches together. Um, you just, what, what helps me is when I have, when I'm looking at my, my work, um, just twist it around and look at it and then twist it back. So you can, um, you know, you can, you can, here, let me get back to it. You can kind of see it, um, and then and switch it in your head. <laughs> I know some people are not visual, um, as visual, but for me, it, it does help. So it might help you. If it doesn't help you, then then just give it a try, um, and and get, and you'll have to feel it. <laughs> but I like to I switch, you know, turn it around in my head, and then I can, um, you know, kind of visualize. Okay, if I want to do, if I want this to be, um, you know, if I want to be purling back, then my yarn would be this direction. It would be towards the front. 
But if I'm going backwards, my yarn has to be towards the back. Um, so I think I'll do another another row here. Maybe I will throw in a, a knit, <clears throat> a decrease. Um, so if here I could um, knit back or purl back back. <laughs> um, so in let's do a decrease and it would just be going into two stitches. If I can get into two stitches, wrap your yarn. Raise your raise okay. your hands up. We can't see them. There Sorry. we go. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Yep, here I'll I'll take it out and redo that one again. All right. So even with my little my paper moved. <laughs> um, all right. So I could go, I could do a decrease by going into two stitches, just working two stitches together. Um, and, you know, you could do like you'd, you could do a slip slip <laughs> and knit. So like a slip, slip, knit them through the back loop or the front loop. Let's see how that works. That looks a little bit better than my first decrease. Um, but it's something that if you just practice a little bit, you can get you can get good at it and it will save you a lot of time for a lot of you know different things. <laughs> um, and let's see. I'm going to take a second to do we have any questions that we anybody have any questions that they want to um, shout out? <laughs> Someone just asked if it changes whether it's going to be a right or a left leaning decrease. Yeah, so it will. So my 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 tricks with decreasing um, when you're working in the normal direction um, if you're if you're doing a knit two together, uh, then you you bring your needles you know this way and come out, and I think of it as my my needle is leaning this way, and that's the direction my my decrease is going to lean. So I knit those two together. If I'm doing an SSK, then I can slip slip, and then my final stitch when I wrap the yarn my right needle is is pointing towards the left. So that's going to give me a left leaning decrease. Um, now that's pretty advanced backwards knitting. <laughs> um, so but it does make a difference. So you can see when I did the um, it, to do to make it look good, I needed to do the slip. So I switch the directions, slip, slip, put that back on and then knit. Um, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not doing a very good demo because I haven't like prepared all of that in my head, but it's possible. So it's you definitely just have to make sure that you're orienting your stitches in the right way so that you, you know, so that they flow together. Um, so <laughs> yes. Any, any other little questions? Um, it, I, yeah, I mean, it, it is really nice when, you know, say you're doing some kind of work that it's it's confusing, which is the right and the wrong side. I think sometimes people like it because then you know you're always on the right side. So you're more working just like a, you know, I don't know, weaving or something because you you always see the right side of your work, and um, then it's it's easier to keep things straight. Also, when you're doing short rows. Um, I know there's that I like it and I, I've heard people that really like it for short rows because then you know you're always yeah on your right right side of your work and you don't get as confused um, flipping back and forth. Um, but yeah, it's really fun to just experiment a little bit with it. Um, find a good pattern. Bobbles are really good, like I said, or um, entrelock or any, I do have this like design that I've been working on for a long time that's hasn't really come together yet, but it uses just like long strips of knitting. Um, and that's the perfect, perfect type of thing for it. But maybe we can show our surprise. Maybe she already kind of showed it, but we are doing a special for everyone that's here today, 20% um, uh, off 
um, on the Zen Yarn Garden website. So um, make sure to use that code in it's displayed now. The code is just opposite. So because you're here learning how to knit in the opposite direction <laughs> and or or knitting both directions. Sometimes people call it um, knitting in both directions because unless you're left-handed, you wouldn't always knit in the, the opposite direction. Um, but maybe you do if you want to. You could, you could always knit in the opposite direction too. <laughs> then you'd have to trim your work. Um, but anyway, any, anything else? Uh, any other questions? That's really all I had. Um, so I can show a couple more times just to, to get a good idea here. Um, but let's see. So now, because I was trying to show the um, the the knitting two together, but I didn't really. Maybe this is a good way to show the leading leg. Now I can tell that my leading leg is towards the front. So I'd still want to work into that leading leg in order to not get a twisted stitch. Um, and here again, my le my leading leg is towards the front. Um, so you can see if I would knit into the back leg, it would twist the stitch. So let's just do that. I twisted the stitch. You can see that now the stitch is twisted. So I'll, I'll take that out. Um, so you always kind of want to work into that leading leg. So now it's back to normal, I would say. So my leading leg is towards the back. And here, my leading leg is still towards the back, but that was a decrease that I did. When you're doing decreases and bobbles and things too, it is helpful to kind of um, turn your work around or you can kind of flip it upside down and look at it from this side or think, just think about which way which way you want it to be. <laughs> All right. Should we show one more time for the um, throwers too, Nick? Throwers in the room? Sure thing. Yes. <laughs> All right. And of course, I just knit a, I just knit a pro row on my knit. Oh. <laughs> that was actually going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, so I got a little question too about um, changing a pattern to knit it in both directions. So yeah, if you, um, you know, you have to get your like head around the terminology, but I like to think of it basically as if you're working, um, it, just think of it if you're, if you're working garter stitch or stockinette. So that's what you really need to know when you're converting the pattern. So the pattern, you know, it might just say like, purl all wrong side rows. <clears throat> and in that case, it'd be pretty easy um, because you when you were working backwards, you would always be um, still keeping the yarn to the back of your work and, um, and going through that, that leading leg from front to back. So if, you, if the pattern tells you to purl, your yarn should be in the back of your work and you should have your needle coming from uh, the front to the back. If the pattern is telling you to knit to, on the on the wrong side, then when you when you're knitting on the wrong side, you need to bring your yarn to the front, and then um, your needle comes from the back to the front through that leading leg. So that's that's the key there. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. So this is the equivalent of a knit from the right side. Yes. So you see how her yarn is in the front of her work and her needle has to come from the back to the front through that leading leg. Nice nails. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and if we were gonna do a pearl, it would be in the back. Yes. And we would go and from front Two back. Mm -hmm. Wrap. Mm -hmm. And through. Nice. Mm 
Yay. <laughs> All right. If anybody tries this, you got to let us know. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and post things. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, you know, the, the entrelock is really good. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you knit back and forth like these little squares that go different directions. Um, and it's a lot of back and forth work. So that's like the perfect, perfect one. When do you, do you ever use it in ink or? I do actually. Yeah. Um, whenever I have to knit bubbles or short rows, mostly. Yeah. I haven't knit rows. entrelock in years, but <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's a fun technique to just try sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's a good trick to have in your, in your bag of tricks. Yes. So. <laughs> Plus, you know, it's a great conversation starter at parties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have so I many was, of those these days. I know. I, have, <laughs> I, I was told not to call it any backwards because that makes it sound bad. It's just the opposite, which I don't know sure what, but I think they, it's fine either way, right? <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> and if you know, you know, if you have a left-handed friend that you want to teach, it's a good way to, you know, have them. <clears throat> yeah, oh. definitely. Sock heels. Yes. Thanks, Karen. The, uh, she says we can, you can use it for sock heels too. Definitely. It helps a lot. <clears throat> Um, yeah, for different situations, but thanks so much for joining us. And we have another one. Is it next Tuesday? The short yes. row? Or, next yeah. Tuesday. Yes. So maybe, yeah. And Nick is going to show us two different kinds of short rows. Two different kinds of short rows. Yep. <laughs> and you do have to register, I think, individually for each of these, um, just for security purposes. Yes. <laughs> um, so please don't forget to register i think that we did have um some people trying to join right right at the last minute and that we're not able to let them in because you have to be registered before um so make sure that you get registered and then you'll get the link and be great <laughs> so and then we've got knit alongs too we have like full project knit alongs so make sure and keep an eye out for those because we've been having a lot of fun with those too <laughs> And the opposite code um, that saves you 20% oh, yeah. is site wide. So that includes the knit alongs. Oh, yeah. So go register for those. You can get your yarn and knit along pattern, everything you need. Um, and more time with us. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Practice, practice. Keep practicing, guys. Always. It does get easier. It does. It and does. it's all good for our brains, right? Oh, is it ever? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. you so much, guys. <clears throat>